Hey everybody, Dave here, and I want to talk to you about ismatch, match, and match all functions. My goal with this video is to take something that's otherwise unapproachable and make it approachable for everybody. Um, a lot of people freak out when they see this because they know that it has to do with regular expressions, and then they get turned off and they run. I have a love-hate my relationship myself with regular expressions only since about 2007. I find myself using them. I love them because they're so powerful. I hate them because every time I need to use them, I got to go back and relearn them. I use them so infrequently that that's the reason for it. But with Power Apps, I find myself using them more and more just because of how accessible it is. And I want to show you too how accessible regular expressions can be. And then I want you to expand your mind's eye. Now, I no longer have to learn regular expressions when I use them because of the way the technology's changed. I find myself in a much better use case, having to spend, not spend hours relearning everything all over again. Um, but I just love the time and the day and the age that we live in because of how easy things have become. Okay, so here's the sentence, and what I want to do is I basically want to answer the simple question, does this text string have an email address inside of it, yes or no? And so we can do that with the isMatch function. So we're dealing with uh, today as to isMatch, match, match all functions. Click the documentation. It'll take you over here. Just click this to show more. You'll see patterns, OK? This is why you don't have to deal. So if we look at predefined patterns, if you can read English, then you can use regular expressions. Because the regular expression column to the far right is the garbly gook that normally you would have to remember or learn and you don't have to do that with these predefined patterns. Now this will get you most of the way there. There is a use case where you're going to have to use real regular expressions when you want to go outside of the box, but still I'm going to show you kind of how to maybe work through some of that so it's not so difficult and show you a couple of uh, websites and tools to get around that so you don't have to relearn it every time or learn it for the first time. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the most simplest one. Again, we, the question is does the string have a email address in it, yes or no? So if we use the isMatch function, anytime we do is blank is match, it's a Boolean, right? Is this true or false? And so in this case, we're just simply just going to do isMatch. Now, if we look at the IntelliSense, it's coming up saying, hey, we need some text to evaluate. Well, if I look over here in a tree view, I have this item called my input. And that's this input box over here where I have this sentence. So I'm simply just going to type in my input dot text to get to the text inside of it. And now if I hit the comma, I get, the, I get access to these plain English items to select. What do I want to match? Do I want to match a comma, anything? Do I want to match a digit, an email? Well, in this case, that's exactly what I want to do. Okay, so there's that. Now I can just close it up here and we could leave it that way. Now you see, I evaluate true. And so that's telling me that yes, there is an email in here. Now by default, let me go back pop, bop, whatever I said, <laughs> back over into the documentation, there is this thing called map option or match options. The default behavior, and if you read this right here, the default for match and match all is contained. The default for is match is complete and the pattern must match the entered string of text from the beginning of the to the end, okay? And it essentially just adds this caret to the start and whatever. It's talking about regular expressions. If you don't know regular expressions, just ignore that. Now, the way this reads, match options complete, it says default for is match. So that tells us it's the default behavior if we don't specify it. It says the pattern must match the entire string. Okay, so look at this entire string. This entire string is not an email address, yet this evaluates to true. In my humble opinion, I think this is a bug. The other reason I think it's a bug is because there's other bugs here. Okay, so this is what I wanted to get to to show you some of the pitfalls to at least let you n be able to use it in a more accessible way and to deal with the bugs. And on top of it, unfortunately, there is additionally errors in the documentation of which I submitted a git pull request for them to fix it. I fixed the code and then you know told them, hey, here's the suggested fix. Consider that for, for this. Okay, so let's use begins with. So I changed begins with, and I don't know if you saw this, but this flipped and refreshed. 
it still evaluates the true. That's, in my opinion, a bug. If I do contains, it's true. Okay, so, well, in this use case, true is actually the correct and expected response. How about uh, ends with? Okay, ends with is true, bug. So it's buggy, just complete true. Let's see if we can get this thing to go to false. Uh, Multi-line. Let's do ignore case. Okay, so it just seems no matter what I type, it's going to evaluate pretty much true. So if your intention is for contains, uh, then just know that this thing's going to fire off true, irregardless of whether or not this is in fact the case. A better use case might be is to use match uh, and then try to do some of the expected behavior with that and see if you get a different result. But Nonetheless, um, if all you want to do is to just say a string is here, it has an email, then, then this is good. Uh, because it will, the good news is it does trigger as true. Um, I think a lot of you are probably just going to use this for validation in a form, just wanting to make sure that somebody types in an email address correctly. And in this use case, uh, the match is match function uh, is going to serve your purposes quite nicely or quite well. Let's go ahead and put this uh, back the way I had it. And let's clear this out here. Okay, so I wanna show you a tool that's out here. Okay, uh, let me just clear all this garbly gook out. I think this is the same sentence that I had over here. Yep, it is. Okay, so what I want to do is I have GPT or po.com. Po you can use GPT 3.5. It should probably work for this as well. But anyway, just use a large language model or some sort of GPT, uh, you know, modern AI to, to help you through this. So I'm going to try a couple different combinations to see if we can get this right. So I'm going to copy this out. I'm going to put this in parentheses or quotes and I'm gonna to talk to it. I want you to consider the previous string, but I want you to ignore the quotes because the quotes are there just for you to know that this is the sentence that I wanna target, period. What I wish to do, okay, so anyway, um, usually I try to talk to it in plain English so I don't have to type to it, but in any event, I'm gonna continue typing or talking to it to, to get it to work. My goal is to detect if there is a email address embedded within the sentence or the paragraph. I would like you to create what's called a regular expression and I want you to additionally signify it as an email group within the regular expression. Please create just the regular expression for me so I can test it out. Okay, that was a lot of talking, and it's going through all of the symbolism, and it's going through step by step trying to explain this to me. I need just the regular expression, please. And this is what it's saying the regular expression is. We can pop it in over here, and it looks like it's worked. So it has extrapolated out the email address out of that string for us. Now, knowing that this in fact is, you know, um, working, I also said I wanted to provide a group. I need to, you to include a group called email in this regular expression for me. Okay, now it's, I now, um, I can see that it is actually has done this correctly. So let's test this again. And looks like reg, regex101.com has, has done this. So I have my match as originally, but I have this group called email. And you might be asking why is this important? So when we use match or we use some of the other um, items as far as the output, if we scroll down here, when we use match and match all, we get these results that come back as a record. And so by using these custom groups, okay, so if we go all the way back up to the top, and again, if you didn't, 
or you don't know regular expressions, uh, this is going to be some, uh, I don't know, some esoteric knowledge or something that you weren't quite familiar with. And you might be scared off, but just think about it in this way, because as you're going through trying to use regular expressions to help you, it's just good to know this is here. And then you can talk to it. See, I don't, I didn't write any regular expression. It either works or it doesn't work. And just keep going back to this GPT until it gets it right. And so, like I said, you know, just you don't have to take the time to remember it. Um, even if it takes you 10 minutes to go through this, it's going to take you an hour to learn regular expressions, maybe a little longer, but by and large, within an hour, you could learn pretty much a good chunk of it to get you moving. So I don't wanna spend an hour, I just wanna spend a minute or two or a couple. I think I only spent four minutes in total, probably more talking to you about it than I did with anything. But in any event, it, the documentation talks about uh, groups and where to do that. And so here it is right here. Uh, it is in this table. It says, now they call it a submatch, okay? So that, that's true too as well. But create a named submatch. It's in regular expressions, it's simply just called a group. Um, I personally haven't heard of it called a submatch. I think this is more power FX nomenclature, but that's what this is talking about. So it's essentially an open paren along with a closed paren, and you put a question mark in there, and then in these Pac-Man mouths, greater than, less than symbols, you give it a name, whatever group name you want to give it. And so the key is by the last clothing parenthesis, uh, this is where you see the dot, dot, dot. You simply, this is where you're going to wrap inside of your regular expression. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and remove that last piece. So this is my regular expression. But if I use the open paren question mark, the group name, then my regular expression, I just have to wrap the end of my regular expression in this group. I can also take multiples of these and string them together. The nice thing about it is when I'm using it with match, I can access it with the dot notation. So whatever the result is that I can get back, I can do dot email, I can do dot whatever. And then you can see down here in the example, you can use the with function with all of that match jammed up together and I can access each of those values to create either a single output or whatever the case may be. So naming and grouping is really, really powerful. So I just wanted to call that out because this really makes regular expressions um, more powerful, easy to learn because you don't actually have to learn them now, but you do just need to know these more esoteric slash advanced intermediate type of things in dealing with them. Otherwise, you can just stick with his match and you're gonna get along just nicely with all of this. So uh, let's go ahead and see if I can put this into action now. Let me grab my regular expression, which is this over here. And I'm going to do in the text box, we're gonna do now match. Come down here to match. We'll do the same thing, my input.text. And this time we're gonna pop in that regular expression and we're going to fold this up. Now, again, notice I'm getting an error. See, there's a re it's, it, this wants a record, okay? So what? It, this is the whole reason for that group. If I do my dot, notice that I get my email. If I change the name of my group, so let's do email dash 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 by five six six, right? Just for kicks, grins, and giggles. Dot dot, ah, dang, now, but come on, it's going to make a liar out of me, ah, probably not going to like all that, uh, we'll just do email foo, maybe this will let me do, there we go, all right, so the point is, whatever I change my name to, my group name is what's going to come out, I just wanted to have something you need to stand out, so if I do email foo now, I can now access my email. So this is very helpful. Match is, and this is kind of the way I think of it. Maybe you want to think of it this way too. I use is match to answer the question of yes and no. I use match when I want to extrapolate, extract, put in a separate variable, parse through, massage, manipulate, do extract, transform load of data within whatever it is. And I use the regular expressions 
uh, to extract that to perform all of these additional operations. So if you think about it in that way too as well, it's very helpful. The final one I want to talk about is the match all and the key with match all is really going to be um, when we look at the examples for match and match all, uh, here's match, here's match all, um, the output of this is a table. Okay, and so you'll get full match, you'll get start match, you'll get any of those uh, group names that you pass in, and then the sub matches actually as a nested table. So just know that you will can access all of that uh, in a really cool way, uh, just like you would do any type of JSON. So match all is really helpful when you want to put everything into like a table and uh, deal with it in a collection and you have multiple things that you're checking so that's essentially um, just think about it as match all the power of match on steroids because now you can kind of you know use a table to kind of manipulate your data all through all of that so hopefully this was helpful to you a couple of quick call outs for some of the bad documentation okay as it relates to the group names and the syntax okay the syntax that I told you about parenthesis, question mark, the, you know, open close, Pac-Man mouse, and then the group name, and then closing up with an expression. The documentation has a crap load of bugs in it, okay? The first bug is right here. If we look at this match example that they have, this particular match function has no closing bracket. So at the very end of their example, you need to put a closing parenthesis. They completely missed that. The other thing that they did here with this match, they have Bob Jones and they have the group name, only the group name. The problem with the group name is, is that they didn't prefix it with the parenthesis question mark in front of the invalid email address. They have the Pac-Man mouse, but they didn't include it there. Also down here, you'll see the same problem with language. They forgot. Um, now they do have the parenthesis, but they don't have a question mark, and so there's just a bunch of errors, syntax errors there as well. And then finally, the same thing here, um, where they've got hours, but they don't have the parenthesis. Like they have it here, but they don't have it where it needs to be. But they do have it correctly down here. So you see, they have open parenthesis question mark colon, and then they have it correctly in the with example, but they've got it incorrect here. So anyway, I cloned the repo. I did a bunch of fixes to it and I pushed it up. Hopefully they'll approve all of that and make the documentation better. But just hopefully you guys will get along with this well. Again, it's insult to injury. It's a hard subject usually for people to wrap their heads around. Hopefully I made it more accessible to you. And then, of course, the insult to injury with the wrong documentation, having bugs in the examples just doesn't help you learn it too well at all either. So, again, that's it for this video. We're going to leave it here. We'll talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.